source of peace and tranquility, etc., is that we turn to him, seeking his forgiveness from the things which will cloud and distort and disturb our minds, our soul, our thinking. Also, there is another hadith which shows that if the Prophet ﷺ was perfect, then his good deeds would have been sufficient to take him to paradise. But he said, do good deeds properly, sincerely and moderately. Don't go to extremes. And receive good news. Receive this good news. Because one's good deeds will not make him or her enter paradise. If it's just dependent on good deeds, whether for us or for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu or for any other Prophet, it wouldn't be enough to get us to paradise. So his companions asked him, even you, O Messenger of Allah, even you? He said, even I. Unless and until Allah bestows his pardon and mercy on me. He wraps me in his pardon and mercy. However, even with our imperfections, there is much we can do to implement this divine name in our lives. In the beginning, we can be a source of peace. On a human level, the believer should strive to be a source of peace and security for his or her believing brothers and sisters. As a law is the source of peace and security in his life. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged this, saying, Al-Muslim, Man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi. The true Muslim is one from whose tongue and hands Muslims are safe. One from whose tongue and hands Muslims are safe. That's what we should be. He also said, Shall I tell you who the true believer is, one from whom the people feel secure regarding their wealth and their persons. So we don't harm others. In order to do that, we need to have clean hearts. Clean hearts. Not jealousy about anybody, envy, hatred, dislike, etc. Our hearts should be free from that. And there's a well-known narration story, true story, of course, of the occasion when in the Prophet Sallallahu mosque, he and his companions were sitting the circle he was teaching them the deen and while teaching them he stopped he paused and he said to them the next person who will walk into the mosque will be from the people of paradise of course this is not the prophet sallam knowing the unseen this was revealed to him Allah gave him that information. Angel Gabriel whispered in his ear. So, of course, once he said that, they all turned to look at the, the gate of the masjid, the door of the masjid, to see who was coming in next. And in walks this companion, Sahabi, who Everybody knew him, 
not maybe by name or whatever, you know, because when the narration was given, they didn't mention a name. It's just a companion, one among his 60,000 or 80,000 when he who were existing when he died. So they said, okay, they looked at him, watched him, he walked in, he had water dripping from his beard, made wudu. He was carrying his sandals in his hands. Then he went, put them down, made his two rakah, which we're supposed to make when we enter the masjid. And then he went over and sat with the circle of the Prophet. So I said, hmm, okay. So, Allahu Akbar, Allah knows best. We don't know why, you know, he, he's not Abu Bakr, he's not Omar, he's not the people who are famous and everything, but, you know, amongst us who's well known, you know, but if you say so. The next day, in the dars, in the lesson that he was giving, he again stopped and said, the next person who's coming in the masjid will be from the people of paradise. Okay, we got somebody else coming now. All right, so we're, they're all looking, waiting to see the next person who's going to walk in. And in walks the same companion. Oh, okay, he did the same thing, joined them. The dars went on. The third day, the Prophet Sallallahu is giving his lessons, teaching the companions. And he paused his lecture, stopped, and told them again, the next person coming in will be from the people of paradise. And they all looked, waiting. In walks the same companion. Subhanallah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can't get a more affirmative uh, proclamation of the Prophet ﷺ about somebody going to paradise. It was he only had the authority based on what Allah had revealed to him to say that this person is going to paradise or that person is going to paradise. We know he did mention this about other companions on other occasions. But anyway, this occasion, all three times it was this individual. So one of the companions, a younger companion, He, what he did was, after the dars was over and people were leaving, he went up to him and he, he said the same, the man who didn't know the name specifically, but uh, companion said, you know, listen, um, you know, I have had an altercation with my father and uh, he kicked me out of the house. I had to leave. Can I stay a few nights with you, please? He said, sure, sure, come, come took him into his home with him and uh, ate with him, went to sleep at night. This young companion, he got up to make his tahajjud and he didn't see him. Where is he? No, not making tahajjud, okay. Then prayed Fajr and so on and so forth. He did this for like Three nights. Then finally, <clears throat> he said, listen, um, actually, I told you a story. There was no problem with my father. I just wanted to know what you were doing that made you among the people of paradise. Of course, companions saying, what, what, what do you mean? I'm among the people of paradise. So that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. You're going to be among the people of paradise. So, ah, but I didn't see you getting up and uh, praying in the middle of the night in Tajud. And I didn't see you fasting every day or, you know, I didn't see anything special. You just like the rest of us. He said, but what you saw is what I am. That's me. He said, oh, except one thing that before I go to sleep at night, 
I make sure that I don't have anything in my heart against anyone. No bad feelings, hatred, you know. I make sure that I go to sleep at night free from that. He's, the young companion said, ah, oh, that's it. <laughs> that's the one that, you know, most of us cannot do. It's just impossible. These things are stuck in our hearts and we can't remove it, you know. Subhanallah. This illustrated the value, and it's a true story, illustrated the value of purifying the heart, cleaning one's heart from these feelings. And Allah tells us in the Quran that we should not hold in our hearts ill feeling towards the believer, the believers. So we should strive to purify our hearts. Striving to clean our hearts of bad feelings and thoughts is something we all can do. Though the companion said it's very difficult, it is difficult, but we can do it. It is important because Allah informed us that having a relatively clean heart is the only thing that will benefit us on the day of judgment. If our hearts are free from major defects, we will be welcomed by Allah who said in the Quran, Surah Ash-Shu'ara, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهِ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ a day when neither money nor children will be of any benefit except one who comes to Allah with a pure heart. And the term used is Salim from Salam, from Salim. In order to further stress the importance of having a clean heart, the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, Allah does not look at your faces or your wealth, but He looks into your hearts and He looks at your deeds. In the same way that we are alert, concerned regarding our physical diseases, we should con constantly assess the condition of our hearts for diseases like lying, backbiting, swearing, hypocrisy, jealousy, showing off, and all these other things. And we should seek cures from them in the Quran and the Sunnah, as all that matters is that we meet Allah as salam with a sound heart. Implementing the divine name as salam, we do so also by turning to Allah for peace. The belief that peace, safety, and well-being comes only from Allah further encourages the believer to turn to Allah for peace of mind and contentment. Peaceful minds and hearts cannot be bought with the wealth of this world. It can only be earned by submitting ourselves to Allah. As the Almighty said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ خُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ It is only with the remembrance of Allah that hearts find rest. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبُ 
That's the 13th chapter, verse 28. Whereas people constantly chase after materialistic means like sex, drugs, and rock and roll to fulfill their desires for contentment and peace, enjoyment, to feel pleased. Many of those with the means to have overdoses of these pleasures end up committing suicide. However, peace from other than a law brings with it turmoil, confusion, and dissatisfaction. It's only peace for a while. You had a famous German industrialist some years back, billionaire, among the richest people in the world, 